Well, we've done prime rib all different ways here in the test kitchen. We've done it traditionally with just salt and pepper. We've taken it outside in the big green egg, and done a reverse sear on it. We've even done it sous vide technique in a vacuum seal. But today we're gonna do a traditional, but bold on the rub on it. So we're gonna do a robust rib roast, so stick around. It's gonna be a good one. Also, you don't wanna miss the slicing technique at the end, so stay tuned. The technique we're doing today is roasting. Specifically, we're doing a prime rib with a really bold rub that goes perfectly with such a rich cut of meat. For more recipes and techniques, make sure you subscribe to our channel. All right, let's get into it and talk about this amazing cut of meat. It's a rib roast. So that means it is a ribeye in a large portion for two or more. So that makes it a roast. This is specifically a three bone rib roast from a full seven bone. That's how big it comes. So it would come about this big and it's cut roughly in half. So it, it weighs about six pounds, which is kind of perfect for the amount of people I want to serve. Let's talk a little bit more about prime rib and what that means. Prime rib just means a rib roast that we put in the oven. And some people would get more technical and say that it would have to be bone attached to be a prime rib but that's really a standing rib roast, meaning it has bones attached to it, which there are three here. That is a standing rib roast. Boneless or bone in, both eat fantastic. It's a wonderful experience either way. Some purists would also say that you have to have the bones attached for it to be even a better experience. I don't necessarily think so. I just like to eat those back ribs separately anyway, so I might as well cook them. So let's talk about marbling. Let's get you a good view of that marbling right there. So the little white flecks within the lean, that's what you're looking for. And the abundance of that is really what certified Angus beef is all about. Look for the logo to be sure to get that consistent every time. I'm gonna take off these gloves and get a rub ready. So traditionally just salt and pepper is all you need, right? Coarse salt, fresh cracked pepper. We talk about it all the time in the test kitchen, but we're gonna up our game with this rub. I've got eight ingredients rather than two. In the whole form of spices, we have coriander, mustard seed, and caraway. We have granulated garlic, onion, a three pepper melange, and red pepper flakes. So with the whole ones, the three ones we talked about, we wanna get those into a coarse form. So I'm gonna put them in a Ziploc bag here. So these three, all going into a Ziploc. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I wanna crush them. I just want them to be fresh cracked is the idea. So it's as simple as putting it in a Ziploc bag and using a meat mallet or a rolling pin in this case. Either roll across or smack it a little bit. And really just to break them, you don't want to get them into a powder form. That's why I use the granulated garlic and onion because a powder form can create more of a paste. But a coarser grind creates a perfect crust on the outside. Then we're gonna combine the other ingredients, which is the garlic, onion, the pepper, melange, and then red pepper flakes, which you might be familiar with. Put all that in, and really, that is your rub. And oh, oh, don't forget the salt. This is something you can make plenty of times ahead and have this as your signature, either steak seasoning or on a roast every time. There you go, we're ready to rub this down. So we can put that on all sides of it. So sometimes it's good to start in the bottom, you get it rubbed in. And I wanna talk about rubbing um, a roast be right before you go in the oven versus spending some time in the refrigerator with the rub on it. Good is if you can get the rub on and put it right into the oven, okay? You're out of time, you're just gonna put the rub on, put it right in the oven. Better is if you can put the rub on and have it spend about an hour in the refrigerator wrapped in plastic to kind of get that flavor in there. Even better, so the best being is if you can wrap it and leave it overnight, the day before you're gonna roast this. That's what I suggest. So I'm gonna put this guy all rubbed down. Let's assume that we had this then overnight and we're gonna put it in a roasting rack. So I've got this roasting rack prepared here where if you can see inside, did you notice there's something in the bed there? I put some potatoes and onions. My idea is that I want those potatoes and onions to kind of enjoy the ride and get some of that fat that renders to drip onto them and become a wonderful side dish that's perfect to go with this prime rib. 
Now that we're ready to roast, I've got an oven preheated to 450 degrees because I want to get a good sear on the outside to develop a good crust. So first step, a 450 degree oven for 15 minutes. Then we drop the temperature to 325. Now, for how long I check my Roast Perfect app, right? So I key in my scenario, which is a bone-in rib roast, weight is six pounds, and my degree of doneness choice is medium rare. But you can key in your degree of doneness choice by putting in from rare all the way to well done, if that's what you'd like. And by keying in my scenario, I have two hours, about two hours and 15 minutes at the 325 degrees. So we'll see you then. All right, it's had its time in the oven. During the oven cooking, I did rotate the pan 180 degrees, and I also gave those potatoes and onions a little stir so that I could get crispiness all around. So for a six pound roast, we need to let this rest about 15 minutes, and you can do that by tenting it with foil while it's doing that or not, that's up to you. Take a look at this crust. You can see all those little nubbins from our, all of our ingredients we put on there. So the coriander, the mustard seeds, and the caraway eats on the crust, and we're gonna enjoy that in each slice. Let's let it rest and we'll get into it. Now that it's had time to rest, we're gonna pull the bones off. That would be the back ribs right here. So a standing rib roast, bone attached right here. We're gonna pull those bones off and it's really just about putting your knife, which by the way, this is a boning knife, a flexible six inch boning knife that allows me to kind of ride the side of the bone as it curves. So you can see this from the front. You can see how the knife is kind of riding the side, and then I come across, again, keeping very close to that bone. You'll come to a stopping point down here that you kind of have to notch. Kind of, it comes, bones go this way, and then you have to notch a little bit back toward the roast itself to really free those bones. So now we're free. We've got the back ribs separated from the roast. Back ribs are perfect for people that like to nibble nibble, right? So I'm all about taking one of these back ribs and having that for myself. We'll give these to our favorite people at the table. Now, carving the prime rib itself, the boneless part, I switch from the boning knife to a very sharp carving knife. Whatever sharp knife you have that's maybe the longest you have. I cut in about half inch thick slices for each person. That's traditional prime rib. You can slice it thinner for people and have kind of a shaved look going on, but really a, for a traditional prime rib, about a half inch thick slice. Just directly going down and you'll view the beautiful prime rib. Oh, that looks fantastic. Again, about a half inch thick. Beautiful. Good crispiness. You'll see my temp is, is where I was targeting. It was like medium rare, going up to a little bit of medium. It should be a crowd pleaser. You'll see because we did a traditional technique, the oven heat makes it more done on the outside and more done on the end. So let your family have the more done outside pieces if that's what they want. All right, so let's put this on a platter for everyone to enjoy. And there you have it. That's how to carve a prime rib. Not too difficult. You've got this. I hope you enjoy this dish with your family and friends.